Uh, hello, students. Uh, today we will see the topic of uh, from paper 104 spatial organization of economic activities fold 4 that is uh, spatial social organization of production transport trade and services global patterns and trends i am neetu sharma assistant professor from guru nanak college of art science or, and commerce so let's begin now, what are the contents under this poll is that you are going to study about the organization of transport in which uh, we will discuss the basis of spatial interaction, the theoretical perspective of transport, the interregional interactions, the role of transport cost nodes, places, networks and flows, and the uh, spatial social accessibility in terms of Indian examples. Uh, we will also cover the international trade theory, classical, neoclassical, and Marxist perspective, critical review, globalization and changing structure and composition of international trade with reference to GATT and WTO. We are also going to cover the topic on logic of regional integration, types and levels, significance of regional integration as a strategy for the periphery, the case studies of EU, OPEC, ASEAN, SARC, and BRICS. Uh, and the last topic that we will cover is new economic activities and globalization, finance and service industry, the fourth industrial revolution. So we will begin with the objectives. What are the objectives of this particular fold? In this particular fold, we will learn the organization of transport and its theoretical perspective, understanding the basis of spatial interaction since it is an important part for transport learning the role for of transport the cost nodes places networks and flows and spatial social accessibility through indian examples uh, discussing the international trade theory and, and in the classical neoclassical and masses perspective understanding globalization and changing composition of international trade and the role of cat and wto in international trade also understanding about the case studies of various trading blocks and learning the new economic activities and understanding the fourth industrial revolution. So with introduction, we will begin. Uh, the movement of people, goods and information have always been fundamental components of human societies. So movement has been taking place since a very long time, uh, since we can say the origin of human society. And the societies have been increasingly dependent on transport system to support a wide variety of activities ranging from commuting, supplying energy needs to distributing parts between manufacturing facilities and distribution centers. So this transport is definitely playing a very important or we can say an essential component uh, for supporting mobility or for movement of people from one place to another. We can say that it is an indispensable component of the economy and plays a major role in supporting special relations between locations. So the, the transport creates links between regions and economic activities between people and the rest of the world uh, and as such generates value. So definitely transport is an important component for spatial interaction to take place. So we will further understand the basis of spatial interaction in which the transport plays an important role. So when we say spatial interaction, uh, it considers the dynamics of flow of people, right service, energy, or information from one location to another. So here, uh, the movement that takes place with of people, of goods, of services, there is an interaction between two different regions or two different places. So the theoretical origins of the spatial interaction can be attributed to the French geographer Edward L. Ullman. Uh, he had proposed uh, the basis of this interaction with the help of three conditions. He said that the spatial interaction will occur if there are three conditions, that is complementarity, transferability, and intervening opportunities. Uh, firstly, what is complementarity? Complementarity refers to demand or deficit in a product at one location and the supply or surplus of the same product to another location. Like if we take one example, a city has a demand for vegetables while the surrounding rural areas may provide them. Suppose if we take the example over here, location A and B. Now, location A has a surplus of minerals 
and location B has a demand for it. So the spatial interaction between these two locations will take place if A wants to supply the surplus minerals to B, the spatial interaction will take place because there is a demand in location B for the minerals. So this is therefore called as complementarity. Then talking about transferability, transferability refers to a possibility of interactions occurring between locations by overcoming distance, time and cost. So if a complementarity supply demand relationship exists between two locations, no interaction will take place if the transfer cost is higher than the benefits derived. So here we can understand this with the help of this example. Now here, uh, uh, spatial interaction between A and B locations. So for example, steel, in, steel factories and petroleum refineries are location A and location B is the port area. So location A is more inclined to locate at the port area, that is location B, where iron ore and petroleum are usually imported. So transferable distance could be extended by improving the capacity and efficiency of transport system and are more inclined to locate at port cities where iron ore and petroleum are usually imported. So therefore, the interaction between A and B will definitely take, take place even since B has the uh, advantageous location of a port over here. Then intervening opportunity. Now a supply and demand pair is necessary for spatial interaction to occur, which implies that location generating a supply provides surplus products while a location generating a demand has a shortage of them. We can understand this with the help of this example. If location C offers same characteristics, mainly complementarity as location B, and is also closer to A, an interaction between A and B will not occur and will be replaced by an interaction between A and C over here. So since C is much more nearer to A, and C is providing the uh, surplus which A requires, so therefore the uh, interaction between A and C will therefore take place over here and not A and B. So this could be understand, understood in this particular diagram. Now moving further, there have been certain theoretical perspectives on transport and the interregional interactions. That interregional interactions definitely takes place when, when there is availability of transport. Now this theoretical perspective of transport includes theories and models to understand the interregional interactions. Uh, the Edward Ullman, the, the theory which we have just studied on uh, interregional interactions, which could be understood with the help of complementarity, transferability, and intervening opportunity. Uh, there are other theories also which were being put forward. Uh, one is by M. E. Hurst. Uh, in 1974, he had introduced a norm economic dimension into location choice and presented it graphically which was called as the host matrix. Uh, there were other theories like White and Senior who in their book entitled Transport Geography considered five basic factors which influence the growth and development of transport system and how changes takes place. The factors are historical, technological, physical, economic, and pol political and social. So these were the five factors taken into consideration by them in the book for uh, the transport system to take place uh, for the growth and development of a transport system over here. Then there is Tiffin Morrill and Gold TMG model, which was introduced in the year 1963. Uh, they had undertaken a comparative analysis of development of transport in uh, developing countries. Their special model of transport network development in developing countries had proved to be valuable in understanding the transport development and has been widely applied. Uh, the other theory was uh, based upon the Ghanaian and the Nigerian experience, but it also implies to developing lands, for example, also in the Latin, Latin America. Then uh, there's Gold's uh, spatial exploration model uh, the behavioral model was proposed in 1966 and it was an alternative to the TMG model uh, on transport development. 
uh, what it incorporated was a random approach and is based upon simulation of search theory with the development of transport network within an area which contains resources and hazards or constraints indicated by isotherms of environmental quality. Then Vanis model of 1970 was based on the Eastern Seaboard of America. Uh, Vanis in 1970 developed a five-stage mercantile model to illustrate the development of transport links and the growth of the urban hierarchy in North America. Uh, it primarily concerned with trade. His model is important in the stresses of the impact of exogenous forces on the evolution of transport networks and their associated facial patterns. Then the Rimmer model also uh, focused in the Brooklyn in 1970 and 1975. He identified the four phases in the evolving interrelationships between metropolitan and third world countries in the transport terms. So all these different models uh, help us recognize that how transport system works, how there is growth and development of transport. Uh, and it how it creates interaction between regions and these interactions play an important role in local regional levels and also in global levels. Then uh, the role of transport cost nodes, places, networks and flows, spatial social accessibility with the help of Indian examples can be studied. So firstly, what is transport cost? Transport cost is a cost internally assumed by the providers of transport services. Uh, they can be considered as a fixed cost and variable cost depending upon various conditions related to geography, infrastructure, administrative barriers, energy, and how passengers and freight are carried. The fixed costs are generally the infrastructure cost, which will remain fixed and will not change while the variable cost will refer to the operating cost of the particular transport. Then talking about nodes, what are nodes? The transportation primarily links locations often characterized by nodes. They serve as an access point to a distribution system or an intermediary location within the transport network. Now this function is mainly serviced by transport terminals where flows originate and or are being transshipped from one node to another like we can take the example of a railway junction a station or a port or airport terminal where the transportation is linked to a particular location which is therefore called as a node then places or locations as all activities are located somewhere each location has its characteristics conferring to a potential supply and demand for resources, products, services, and labor. A place will determine the nature, the origin, the destination, the distance, and the possibility of a movement. Like, for example, taking the example of city, a city is providing employment opportunities in various sectors. Therefore, it has an important place. And it is also an important location because it has the all the transport facilities available. Then network. A transport network is a network or a graph in geographic space describing an infrastructure that permits and constrains the movement or flow. So it is composed of set of linkages expressing the connectivity between places and the capacity to handle passenger or cargo volumes. It basically considers the spatial structure and organization of transport infrastructure and terminals. So it would include a network of various different modes of transport in a geographic space. Then flows, it is the amount of traffic over a network, which is composed of nodes and linkages. This is jointly a function of the demand and the capacity of linkages to support them. Like, for example, the interactions between travelers and the infrastructure. So suppose if it is the main point of the city, the flow of the passengers or the flow of the travelers will be towards the city over here. So that will indicate the flow of the uh, particular uh, transport over here, which will be based on the interaction of travel travelers and the availability of infrastructure. Now, understanding the spatial social accessibility of all these, taking into consideration the Indian example, 
so it can be said that the accessibility is the measure of capacity of a location to be reached from or to be reached by different locations right so we can say that accessibility definitely is important over here so we say that uh, a well developed and efficient transportation system offer high accessibility levels uh, while less developed ones have lower less levels of accessibility yes thus accessibility is linked with the area of economic and social opportunities so if there is accessibility in one particular de destination because there is availability of a very good transport so those areas will be economically developed and would have more amount of social opportunities so all locations are not equal because some are more accessible than others which implies inequality so some areas are more developed some areas are less developed because of the accessibility that is up there so therefore there will be inequalities so therefore we say that accessibility is the proxy for spatial social inequalities so this accessibility determines human opportunities for jobs economic or social interactions access to good or to the use of social or economic resources uh if there is inadequacy in the transport provision it could undoubtedly exclude several people from fully participating in daily activities for instance obtaining access to education employment and various social and leisure pursuits so if, if there is any kind of insufficiency in the transportation definitely it would restrict the movement of people and it would restrict them to move for various activities in their daily life we can understand this with the help of indian examples now when we talk about india's transport sector it is definitely quite large and quite diverse uh, it has been seen that since the early 1990s india's growing economy has witnessed a rise in the demand for transport infrastructure and services so india's transport infrastructure has immensely developed in the last uh, you can say 20 to 30 years now when we take the simple example of mumbai so mumbai is known as a city where people from different parts of india they migrate and this migration is definitely for the number of economic and social opportunities available in mumbai but when we talk about mumbai historically mumbai was a center for trade and this was due to its accessibility to water transport so overseas trade brought in a floating population of traders and seafarers from different communities to mumbai and mumbai became a major trading hub during the time of britishers as transportation improved so economic opportunities and access to social services also improved due to transport in mumbai and uh, now mumbai is definitely the financial capital of india so this was majorly due to the uh, the development of various economic activities in mumbai since the past uh, we can also take into consideration that if there is availability of better education facility uh, uh, there where there is good accessibility so better education facilities are available in india in cities with good accessibility like bangalore pune ahmedabad delhi mumbai etc so this also describes the socio spatial accessibility one more example can be taken of the city navi mumbai now navi mumbai has a planned development of this navi mumbai in the city of maharashtra uh, it is a well connected to other parts of the state and the country now it has all forms of transport well developed and remarkable infrastructure now it has a home for various educational institutions offering courses in various several streams uh, even a number of multinational companies branches and their head offices are located across navi mumbai so navi mumbai provides a several recreational facilities for special social interaction to take place so with this it can be said that accessibility to a particular place would depend upon the availability of transport and if there is a well connected connected network or availability of transport so the area will flourish it will have more amount of economic opportunities and social opportunities so we end this topic over here thank you so much